Yeah, I tell, I tell people I'm dyslexic now. First I used to hide it, but now, now I don't. Because um, I do talk to young kids and adults in school and being, being an, an athlete and being in the public eye now, like from the Commonwealth, it's, it's a bit, it's less stress on me if I turn around and, and say to someone before an interview if they want me to read a card out by saying I'm actually dyslexic, is it alright if you just sort of tell me it and I kind of wing it instead of reading word for word off a, off a playlist and some people that, that's better, it's better, I'm better kind of winging stuff than if you put in front of me because then I end up looking at the paper and I stutter and I was like, um, but if you let people know then it's a bit better because then when they ask you stuff or they go can you write down stuff there's stuff I can fill out easily, like my name and that, but then some kids come up to me and I ask for an autograph and they say, can you sign it too? And I'm really bad at spelling names, so sometimes I go, well, how about I sign it? And then if you just write at the top of it to and write your own name, how about we do it that way? And some of the kids are like, okay, and that will say to kids like, oh, I'm really bad at spelling, I don't want to spell your name wrong. Some kids like appreciate that and they'll be like, oh, this is how you spell it, and they'll tell me first and I'll write it down, which then I'm like, all right, I'll write it down, but... Other times, like, I'll be like, to kid, just you, you write your name on top, but I'll sign it for you. So it's just, um, at first I used to not say to people, but I believe that it's nothing wrong with being dyslexic. So I think if you are, it's all about, it makes it easier for the other person to maybe understand why you've written something down wrong, or especially on texting. I'm the worst person at texting, I miss out words all the time. <laughs> Dyslexia affects me the biggest way is, like, uh, like going in, like, I think mostly, like, emails. So through, through work and through my sport, like my coach might email me and ask me to reply back to stuff and I find that that's my, my hardest thing is like, or if I'm, I'm going to do work, like if I wanted to work in a supermarket, I'm scared and I tell that I hit the wrong thing, like it might look like the right word to me and I've hit it and it goes through or I'm, or like if I'm, I'm looking down, just like in a shopping centre and you're asking for something and the person is right in front of you and yet I've been staring at it but I've just not, I've not read the word, I can't see the word. That's the, the most thing that I find panicky is like walking in and like trying to read stuff or if somebody goes right, this is what you're looking for and if they've just told me the name and I don't know the, like how to spell it at all and I'm looking at it, if somebody goes back to me, just look up a dictionary for this word, I, I can't and that's, that's, a, that's the only good thing about certain phones is now like the equipment you got now that you can speak into phones and it can read it back to you. I was like, but that's what happened to me through college is I got a I got a software, so when I was on the internet I could highlight it and it read back to me like a computer voice. But it meant I could understand, I'd highlight the word and what the meaning was and it would read it to me. Because I'd be trying to read the meaning and I wouldn't know. And it's like somebody goes, I just look up my dictionary. But I don't know how to spell it at all, so it's really hard to just look up my dictionary. But if I say it to someone and they explain it back to me. I'm not someone you could, you could totally explain something to me and like say it, say it over and I wouldn't do it, but you could demonstrate it. So you could demonstrate how to run in a straight line and I would be able to do it perfectly, but if you broke it down and said, you take this step, this step, I would, my brain wouldn't work with it. My brain's something that when I see something, I take it in and I can do it. Like I was at school, I was very good at all my practical sides, like so when it came to sports and music and craft and design stuff, like I was very good and I was high up in my class, but when it came to English, it was like sometimes my teacher just thought I was being lazy and not really wanting to, to do it, but it was the fact I was like, I would have panics and that because I couldn't read the words and a wee bit in yourself you kind of think you're a wee bit stupid yourself because you're like well how come I can speak perfectly normal but when it comes down to actually saying what I'm saying and writing it down I, I just couldn't, my hand didn't want to write what, what I was saying and um, it was quite like I was a wee bit like shy and nervous when it came to do stuff like reading out I was always the one that maybe hid in the background or if it did come to that time in class where you had to go up and read something, I would maybe annoy someone so the teacher would be like, maybe put me out of the classroom so I would miss the reading bit and then I would come back in and the teacher would give you the wee lecture but you'd be like, oh sorry, I won't do it again and, and that way you sort of, uh, I kind of, through me, through school, I kind of learned how to hide that I wasn't that good at the reading and writing stuff and I was good at maths and building stuff and good in my hands so I kind of just stuck to the stuff I was really good at and then when it came to the English side of it, I just had to work that wee bit harder or ask for help. But it is hard to go and ask for help sometimes, but actually is better for you because the grades you can, I can, I boosted my grade for failing some classes to, by getting someone to help me scribe, it was getting me up to maybe twos and I was getting an A to a B, so it meant I could go into higher education as well. I would say to um, 
any young kid that thinks they might be dyslexic or have got dyslexia, to, the best thing is, is when you are struggling in a class, is to stick your hands up and maybe ask the teacher for help or if you've got a close friend like, that you trust, just say to them like, I'm struggling at this, uh, like, they, could, they can help you a lot, it might just be like simple wee word they might need to do it or like when you write something just asking them to read over it like a family member, I said that was my, my best thing was like my family were all supporting me but my big sister was one of the, that helps me still, until to this day, like if I'm writing emails or something sometimes I'll forward it to my sister first and she'll spell check it, she's not even got dyslexia but sometimes she makes up her own words and I'll be like I don't think that's a word and I'm the dyslexic one. <laughs> Um, but we like kept like sometimes it's just actually having a laugh about it as well it makes you feel a bit more comfortable and just having the confidence like playing board games I'm petrified if I'm the one that has to read the card out but I've usually I'll turn to a friend and go look when it comes to my shot can one of you read the card for me and I'm fine with the practical side of it but it's just that wee bit of reading so I think it's just having like your close friends and letting them know and just asking them to help you out because they're not they're your friends, they're not going to laugh at you, they're not going to make fun of you, they're, want to be, they're going to want to help you because they want them, you to do as good as what they're doing.